let's put our understanding of specific heat in practice by working through this practice problem. So say we've got a flask containing 800 grams of H2O, 8.0 times 10 to the second grams. Let's actually draw a picture of that really quick so that we can just get an intuitive feel for our system. So say we've got that water in a beaker and let's say it's a liter beaker and we've got 800 grams of it. That's going to be about 800 milliliters of water here. And what's happening in this system is a temperature increase from 21 degrees C to 85 degrees C. Let's, so let's go ahead and, and jot that down. Maybe the beaker is on a hot plate and we're increasing the water from 21 degrees C to 85 degrees C. Pretty hefty increase in temperature. And we've got the heat capacity as well, and we're going to need this number in just a little bit. Before we dive into calculations, though, I want to think about the sine of Q. What is the sine of Q going to be for this process? And you can tackle this a couple of different ways. I've got a temperature change, and I want to find a heat. And so I'm going to be applying this equation Q equals MC delta T. Well, if we understand what the delta symbol means, final minus initial, We'll reason that the delta T is going to be positive, the mass is positive, the specific heat is positive, and so Q will be positive. That's one way to go about this. Another way to go about it, the conceptual and more intuitive way, is to understand that heat is flowing into the system, or the thermal energy of the system is increasing because the final temperature is greater than the initial temperature. In this situation, the process from the perspective of the water is endothermic. Heat is flowing into the system, and that corresponds to positive heat. So before we even dive into any calculations, we can conclude that the heat here is going to be positive. And that's a useful intuitive deduction to make, at the very least, because if you're looking at a multiple choice situation, you can rule out any negative values. And from here, it's really just a matter of plugging and chugging. I have the mass, and that is 8.0 times 10 to the second grams. I have the change in temperature. I'm actually going to rearrange this equation a little bit and put the change in temperature first, 85 minus 21 degrees C. And I have the specific heat. And the reason I wrote the specific heat last is I wanted to pay careful attention to the units. So the specific heat, which is given, and this is a very famous value for water, 4.184 joules per gram per degree C. And the thing to notice about these units for specific heat, these units are highly general, energy divided by temperature divided by mass. We get a cancellation of the degree C and the gram units, and all that's left is joules. And when we calculate all this out, we end up with 2.1 times 10 to the fifth joules. And we could also represent this, for example, as 210 kilojoules. And it's as simple as that. And there are a number of different permutations we could imagine for problems like this, right? Maybe we're given the heat, and we're given the mass, and we're asked to calculate the delta T. Maybe we're given the heat, given the mass, and given delta T, and asked to calculate the specific heat. These can all, all be done. Various permutations on what information do I have, and what information am I trying to find. Here's another example problem that corresponds to a permutation, but still uses the same fundamental idea of specific heat and heat capacity as the connection between heat and temperature change. We've got a piece of unknown metal, we have its mass, 348 grams. That metal absorbs a known quantity of heat, 6.64 kilojoules. Maybe we're using some kind of system that we've calibrated where we know how much heat it delivers per some amount of time and we're hitting it over a known amount of time that delivers 6.64 kilojoules of heat to the metal. And for example, using a thermometer, we know that the temperature increases from 22.4 degrees Celsius to 43.6 degrees Celsius. So our goal here now is to determine the specific heat of the metal and its likely identity based on a table of specific heats. Let's draw a picture of the situation. We've got a block of metal that's probably sitting on a hot plate or something like that. The metal has a mass, 348 grams. We know that, and we know the temperature increased 22.4 to 43.6 
degrees C, we also know the amount of heat delivered, 6.64 kilojoules. I'm looking for a specific heat. I have the mass, the heat, and a temperature change. Q, M, C, and delta T are the key components of this problem. And of course, for the problem itself, what we want to know is the specific heat, and we can calculate that as the ratio of the heat divided by the mass times the change in temperature. So nothing too special here. Once we understand that this is really key to the problem, we can calculate the specific heat. And this gives a specific heat, which is pretty much 0 0.900 on the nose. And the units are joules per gram per degree Celsius. If we now go to a table of specific heat values, for example, one can be found in the Chemistry OpenStax textbook, Table 5.1, in the second edition. We'll see that this value most closely matches the specific heat of aluminum metal. So there you go. Relatively small value if you think about comparing this to 4.184 joules per gram degree C for water. So it makes sense that this would be a metal.